morning with our service. It was most excellent, by the way. Very good Sunday school class. This morning, <clears throat> um, I wanted to speak on a certain subject that um, I was able to receive uh, from this book. It's called Our Own Hymn Book. And it's a compilation of hymns and um, things written about the psalms and the hymns that uh, Brother Charles Spurgeon put together. Very, very excellent reading. But when the Lord created man in his own image, he gave them something that would navigate man either to do what was good and pleasing to the Lord or do what was evil and against the Lord. The heart is a marvelous creation of God, and that's what I want to speak about this morning, the heart of man. <clears throat> there have been times that we can look back and think of a time when our heart has fainted because of fear or unbelief, and there have been times where we're able to rejoice in our heart because of the workings we see in our brethren and the workings of the Lord. So we see that there are two capacities of the heart, one to, to be unbelieving and fearful, and one to be joyful and glad. But today I want to draw a, con a contrast between a heart that is well-pleasing to God and the heart that is, has no desire Godward. Jesus spoke this way when he was talking about the heart. He said, O generation of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. What proceeds out of a man is the fruit of what resides in the heart of man. Amen. James wrote this, So can a fountain yield forth both salt water and pure water? This is true of the heart as well. Can evil and good reside in the heart of man? There are those who would try to convince you that a person that exhibits poor judgment and smells of the world has a good heart. On the contrary, I propose that this is not true. For Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Either you are a fool and say in your heart there is no God, or your heart has been fully entrusted into the hands of the, of the living God in order for him to shape and mold it into the per perfect likeness of his own. It's written in the sixth chapter of Genesis. This is what the Lord he looked over mankind, and this was his conclusion. And God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was evil continually. Amen. So what's God's response to the heart issue? Was he like a blind parent who ignores the temper tantrum of his two-year-old throwing a fit in the aisle? No, God repented that he had ever made man. And then the Spirit made mention that it grieved him in his heart. God was grieved that he had ever even made man. God was moved in his heart to destroy the entire earth, both man and beast and all living things, because of the fruit that was born out of the heart of men. God desired that, that those who would have the same desires and passions as he, this is what he wanted, those, he wanted those who were after his own heart. In the flood, God revealed what would result from an evil heart. Total destruction. And God has not changed. This is still true in our day. We are living in a time when the hearts of men are growing increasingly evil. Which one of us can't turn on the TV and find in that day something tragic that has happened because of the evil heart of mankind? We're told in Romans, Paul wrote, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of God, of the, of the glory of the uncorruptible God, into an image made like to corruptible man, and to the birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also made them up to gave them up to uncleanness to the lust of their own hearts 
to desire their own bodies between themselves. So here we have a very vivid picture of the wickedness of man and what his heart can do. The heart of man can be most deceptive. We're told in Jeremiah, their tongue is as an arrow shot out. It speaketh deceit. One speaketh peaceably to his neighbor with his mouth, but in the heart he layeth his weight. He's waiting to do that which was evil and wicked. What is in the heart of man will come out. There is coming a day when the hearts of all men will be revealed and made known, and God would will be justified to either condemn them or to say, well done. Paul again wrote in Romans, But after thy hardness and impenitent heart, treasurest up for thyself, unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteousness judgment of God, who will render to every man according to his deeds. So there's coming a day when this will be revealed. But we don't leave it there. Praise be to the God and Father that the heart of man does not have to be left in an unproductive and dreadful state. Amen. Paul wrote in Romans six seventeen, But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which is, was delivered to you. Our hearts can be washed by the pure blood of Jesus Christ. The heart of stone can be replaced with a heart of flesh, mm -hmm. one that is supple and moldable. Our beloved Charles Spurgeon once wrote, If we empty our hearts of self, God will fill them with his love. Mm -hmm. I am thankful for the ability that this dear brother had and how he was able to draw the truths to our understanding. <clears throat> Are you touched by sin? When you have given in to the cries of the enemy to join his number, are you grieved when you come to your senses? Does the iniquity of the world weigh heavy against you? Does the thought of our Lord hanging on the tree that dreadful day bring sorrow and great heartache knowing that he hung there because of our transgressions against God? Do you desire to do good and not evil? Have you confessed with your mouth the Lord Jesus and have believed in your heart that God has raised him from the dead? Then you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Whosoever believeth on him shall be saved. But being saved is not the end of the matter, it is only the beginning. We draw near to God with a true heart and full assurance of faith without wavering. And our hearts are sprinkled from an evil conscience. We are able to hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Our hearts in Christ Jesus are established with grace. The hearts of the brethren are knit together by a common bond found in Christ Jesus. We've experienced this with the brethren that we know throughout the world. Our hearts are drawn to them. We've just met our brother Sean this morning, and our hearts are drawn to him because of his love for the scriptures and his desire to speak them. Mm -hmm. Amen. Peter wrote this, Seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth, the spirit, and to unfeigned love of the brethren, see that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. <clears throat> this is why we have gathered today, brethren. Our hearts have longed after this, after this meeting together. Why? Why is that? Why are we drawn together? Why do we continue to come together even when those who don't understand this come against us? It's because our Lord is here. And even though we have not seen him yet, we love him. And our pure hearts that have been changed by him have drawn us together. It's written in Ephesians, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And as I was looking through um, this topic of the heart of man, just the word heart, I was interested in how many times, because when I brought it up, I was actually surprised to see how many times it was actually mentioned in the scriptures. And just that word, just heart, singular, 763 times it's mentioned from the Old Testament to the New Testament, what we call the Old Testament and New Testament. So this is a, a key matter that the Lord wants us to know about. I was looking, and um, the heart speaks, the heart sings, the heart receives, 
All of these things have to do with the heart that the Lord has given unto us. So brethren, this morning as we've come together, I want to ex exhort all of us as the Spirit did on the Lord's Day that day in Patmos, come up higher today. Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith. And I'm confident that we will not be ashamed as we have not yet been ashamed. And I wanted to read an excerpt out of this book that I thought was, was very appropriate for this time. It's, it's called Longing to Love Christ. I thirst, thou wounded lamb of God, to wash me in thy cleansing blood, to dwell within thy wounds, then pain is sweet and life or death is gain. Take my poor heart and let it be forever closed to all but thee. Seal thou my breast and let me wear that pledge of, that pledge of love forever there. How blessed are they who still abide, close sheltered in thy bleeding side, who life and strength from thence derive and by thee move and in thee live. What are our works but sin and death? Till thou thy quickening spirit breathe, thou givest the power thy grace to move, our wondrous grace and boundless love. How can it be, thou heavenly king, that thou shouldest, sh should, shouldest us to glory bring? Make slaves the partners of thy throne, decked with a never-fading crown. Hence our hearts melt, our eyes o'erflow, our words are lost, nor will we know. Nor will we think of aught beside, my Lord, my love, my crucified. Ah, Lord, enlarge our scanty thought to know the wonders thou hast wrought. And loose our stammering tongues to tell thy love immense and searchable. Mm -hmm. Firstborn of many brethren, thou, to thee, lo, all our souls we bow. To thee our hearts and hands we give. Thine may we die, thine may we live. Sister Jim will come now for our singing.